Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice problem with an infinite sum. We have 3 over x cubed plus 5 over x to the 5th power plus 7 over x to the 7th power and so on and so forth, all the way up to and including infinity, and that is equal to x. So we have an infinite series, and then that is equal to x, and we are supposed to solve for x. Now, where does this problem come from? Well, this problem was actually inspired by a problem that was written by Diego Ratagi, I hope I said it right, a professor based in Switzerland, a mathematician, author of a number of books, which you can check out. I'll include the links to his Twitter or X down below. And I didn't see this problem directly, but actually it was shared by another mathematician, a professor, a author of 50 books, Cliff Pickover, uh, and he shared this problem. You can only see partially because otherwise it would give away the solution. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this problem and see how we can solve it. So thank you for the idea, Professor Ratagi. Now, we have 3 over x to the third plus 5 over x to the fifth plus 7 over x to the seventh, so on and so forth. And that's equal to x. Now, when I asked this question to Wolfram Alpha, it said cannot determine the general term. That happens sometimes, even though I think it's pretty clear we are dividing an odd number by x to the power that number. We're adding this infinitely many times with consecutive powers that are odd and it's equal to x, which is a finite solution, right? So we want this sum on the left to converge so that we can get a finite value at the end, which we're gonna be looking at. So what do we need? We do need that one over x to be the absolute value of one over x to be uh, less than one, which means the absolute value of x needs to be greater than one. So think of x as any number greater than one or anything that is less than negative one, otherwise it's not going to convert. So when we solve the problem, we have to make sure that we satisfy this criteria or criterion, whatever you wanna call that, okay? Ready? So I'm gonna go ahead and look at this sum from a different perspective. So I wanna do the following. I want to evaluate, maybe start with something like this, r plus r cubed plus r to the fifth plus r to the seventh plus r to the ninth and so on and so forth. And I'm gonna go ahead and maybe I should write r to the ninth too, I don't know. And I wanna basically bring these to the front. So basically the, the, the stuff that I'm looking for is something like this. I wanna get 3r cubed plus 5r to the fifth plus 7r to the seventh, so on and so forth. So to get there, I kind of need to think ahead of time. What would happen if I did not multiply this by r? Or in other words, what happens if you factor out an r? Then you get something like this. And this should look familiar to you because if you really look at this carefully, inside the expression, you're going to notice that this is the derivative of r cubed. This is the derivative of r to the fifth. This is the derivative of r to the seventh. So if I go ahead and write the sum of the odd powers and then differentiate both sides, and then, you know, I should be able to get to this. You get the idea? That's where that comes from. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase it and then start with the odd powers, differentiate, and we'll get to that point, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with a sum like this. And what is that sum equal to? Think about it. If you have an infinite geometric series and if it converges, which it does, because if absolute value of x is greater than one, that means the absolute value of r is gonna be less than one in this case, because one over x is equal to r. You get the idea? So this can be written as the first term divided by one minus the common uh, ratio, which is r squared. Notice that if you divide the second term by the first, you get r squared, which is the common ratio for this infinite geometric series. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So there's a formula for the infinite geometric series and that's what we used. Now we're gonna go ahead and differentiate both sides with respect to r. When we differentiate, we're gonna get something very nice on the left because that's gonna turn into one plus three r squared plus five r to the fourth plus seven r to the six and so on and so forth. And on the right hand side, we need to use the quotient rule. What's the quotient rule? You differentiate r, multiply by the denominator, 
minus you do differentiate the denominator which is negative 2r multiply by the numerator which is r and divide by the denominator squared that's just the quotient rule so let's go ahead and rewrite it this expression in the simplest form let's go ahead and simplify this it's going to look like this 1 minus r squared plus 2r squared right because negative negative is going to make a positive and then we're going to go ahead and divide this by 1 minus r squared squared we can simplify the numerator and that becomes r squared plus 1 divided by 1 minus r squared squared and that's equal to this yeah i don't need to write it again right hopefully now here's the magic or mathematic we're going to multiply by r now multiply both sides by r you're going to get r plus 3 r cubed plus 5 r to the fifth and that's exactly what you need i mean close enough and of course multiplying by r means you introduce the r there of course you have to do the same thing on both sides you got it now we're very close the reason why i say we are very close is because we don't have an r in our sum remember our sum started with 3 r cubed and then it continued and i already erased it but at least from here you know that the first term is supposed to be 3 r cubed that's why i need to subtract r from both sides but guess what that's fairly easy to do there you go that's the sum you're looking for so we need to simplify the right hand side and that's going to give us what we need 3 r cubed plus 5 r to the fifth plus 7 r to the seven dot 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 and now we have r cubed plus r minus r times 1 minus r squared squared all over 1 minus r squared squared so that should give us the sum but which sum are we talking about here let's go ahead and write it down okay here we go n equals 1 to infinity we have to be careful because we are dealing with odd numbers here and that's just going to be odd powers r to the power 2n plus 1 so this is the sum we're looking for if you give this to wolfram alpha yes it can evaluate it because it's not ambiguous anymore but when i when you give a couple terms it just can't determine the i mean it should be able to come on but it's not ai it's a large language model right that's what people uh, come to defense of wolfram alpha when i say how come wolfram alpha cannot evaluate something like this anyways you can always blame language models in ai i guess so now we're going to go ahead and simplify this a little bit more if you expand it you're going to get 1 minus 2 r squared plus r to the fourth power divided by 1 minus r squared squared if you did not make any mistakes this should be the answer and then minus r plus 2 r cubed minus r to the fifth power divided by 1 minus r squared squared and from here we should get something like negative r to the fifth by the way these two are going to cancel out and then plus 3 r cubed divided by 1 minus r squared squared i have a feeling that we made a mistake somewhere i hope i didn't but if i did i know you're going to point it out but that basically gives us the sum but here's what we need to do we need to replace r with 1 over x because we want our sum to be in the x form so basically, if you replace r with 1 over x, this is what you should be getting. In the numerator, 3x squared minus 1. And in the denominator, we should have x times x squared minus 1 quantity squared. By the way, that extra x in the denominator comes from the fact that when we replace r with 1 over x, that's going to bring in an x squared in the denominator. That's why we have this kind of term. And this is supposed to equal x, by the way. And if you do the math, again, I did it for you or rule form alpha did it for me you get something like this which is super duper nice x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 1 equals 0 what does that mean this means that we have a core tick and there are four solutions let's go ahead and do this to solve for x let's set x squared equal to y and then we get y squared minus 3y plus 1 equals 0 which is a quadratic if you solve it using the quadratic formula you're going to get 3 plus minus root 5 over 2 by the way these numbers should be familiar to you because they will bring you the golden ratio yay so from here we can say hey maybe x squared is equal to this or x squared is equal to this right and they're both fine because they're both positive but be careful the absolute value of x is supposed to be greater than one so that's the only thing you need to pay attention to if you multiply the top and the bottom by two you get something more familiar because this is root two, five plus one squared and when you square root it you're gonna get x equals root 5 plus 1 over 2 or x equals 
negative root 5 minus 1 over 2. Now, they're both good because this is greater than 1 and this is less than negative 1. But if you go with the other solution, uh-oh, we're not going to get solutions that work. So we kind of have to discard them and we end up with two solutions. So let's go ahead and look at the original problem. The original problem basically gave us the golden ratio. And then you can actually check it out if I can find the link to the tweet or X. I'll share with you, but the problem went something like this. And yes, it was the golden ratio that satisfies. And this is the inspiration for this problem. Again, Professor Ratagi, thank you very much. Go ahead and check out his X or Twitter page. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let, uh, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and... Bye-bye.